Okay. All right. Awesome. I saw just saw your two covers. They are absolutely amazing. Um. Anyways, let's get started okay. here. Um. My name is Thomas Kilbasinski, and this is my absolute first podcast. So we're working on this stuff and trying to get better and better. Wow. Um. So here's what we're doing. Okay. That's great. So here's what I want you to do. I know I have a set of interview questions here, but she made them up. So I'm going to go with my own interview questions. Okay. So how did you come all right. up? That's all right. How did you come up with these two books? I have 30 of my own books, and I've never seen anything like this before. So what made you decide to come up uh -huh. with the idea for the Cold Wish book and then also The Greatest Deception? Do you have okay. Um, my the the greatest deception is the, is the first book I yeah the greatest deception is the first book I wrote. Uh, but that is not by any chance uh, the first book idea that I've had. You understand? But I am a I am a Christian. You understand? So I believe as Christians, uh, you know that you know when the Lord laid things on our heart, I believe that the greatest deception is something that. You know, like a call for me. I believe it's a call that you know. I yeah, that I received the inspiration that I should go ahead and do that. Even when I started, I didn't know what you know how it would turn out to be. So I just started one page, two page. I was just going, and before I knew it, I had a, over four hundred pages of uh, book on my hands. Um, so it's basically uh, my Bible knowledge second, uh, repeat, inspiration. Repeat that you just told me something that I've never done. You mean to tell me you've done 400 pages in that book? Wow. Yes. <laughs> that is yes. four times larger than my book. That is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Keep on going. Yes. So, um, because I believe, like I was saying, it's an inspiration. So, if, if that's what you believe, it's not in you to say, I'm going to stop right here. You know what I mean? It's not in it's not in me to say, oh, I'm gonna stop at a hundred pages. I'm gonna stop at fifty pages. So as long as the inspiration kept pushing me to keep going until I know that yes, I've heard it. I have reached the hand. This is the hand. Just like kind of you start in Genesis, and when you get to Revelation, you know that this is it. This is the hand of the book. So um, that is, and I kind of do, or uh, sometimes I do uh, script writing, which is uh, screenwriting as well. Uh, so, you know, when a story, they said, let a story lead you to tell itself, you know, so I kind of, I kind of do that, follow the story. I follow the story and let the characters, let the, let the uh, content, let the topics write themselves through you, you know, so that's what I did. Uh, and that's how I was able to come up with the first one. The second one, the code wish, uh, it's, you know, I, I was doing a work with a friend of mine. It, it's about, um abuse you know of young minors and, and and whatnot so it's about a girl a young girl that was uh sexually abused by some stranger uh, mm -hmm. so you know she grows up uh she grows up and you know she 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 had a lot of with her mom she had some help she pulled through that life experience and when she grew up in like 20s now she's starting to have a uh, you know boyfriend and and the, the cut the story short the person that she's dating now it's the son of the person that abused her. You understand? So it's a kind of, a, it, it's very dramatic. It's a novel, it's, it's drama, it's, you know, and it tells a lot about what's going on in society. So, um, you know, that's how I came about those books to answer your questions. That's really amazing that you're putting God first. That's a really amazing. And I also see that you, it sounds like you're a transitional writer when it comes to these books. Like you're putting one thought together and it connects all as one. And then number yes. two, I see that you're seeing God put you on the earth for a purpose. That's what you're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Absolutely. That that's what I believe. All right. And that's what I believe. And I, I believe that, you know, uh, when we come to this earth, like you said, you know, we have a purpose. If you if you come here without fulfilling your purpose, then then, you know, you have not lived at all. So I, I want to write content. I want to write stories that will change somebody's life. Uh, stories that I don't care how many people read it. I just know that when somebody reads it, it's going to have an impact on their uh, subconsciousness. It's going to change something in them. It's going to help them in a way. 
not just to say I'm putting a story out there. So that's, you know, a, a purpose driven writing, so to say. Okay, so we actually, you actually did pretty good of answering question number two that she put on here. So let's go back to question number one. The thing is, we felt, I felt the need to get these books out right away because when I was on TV, the two or three times I had to do that. And one of the things that when it came to this stuff, we do things differently. Like I'm a USA author, international, known internationally. And the other thing is too, people have their own way of doing things. Like you just said right there, you went straight forward. You had no fear of doing it. And you said, this is the way I do it. I like that. And straightforward. You tell them how you're doing it. So here's another, here's going to be another question. Okay. So um, make sure, if you don't understand it, just let me know and I'll repeat it. So All right. it says, can you share a bit about your journey in the publishing world? What sparked your interest and led you to become a book publisher? Okay, um, so to answer that question is what led me is that, you know, when you have a story, it's like you have done something and you are looking at it and you say, oh, I think this is amazing. I have to let somebody else see this. I have to let somebody, I'm not going to be the only one that see this. I have to let somebody see this. So how else do you have somebody see it? I mean, I show it to my friends and family. I show it to my, you know, church folks, but I believe that, you know, the world has over seven, eight billion people. I mean, why not let the million people see it? You understand? So that's what led me to like, I, I want I want to have a reach as far as possible. You understand? So uh, that's how the journey began. Um, so if you will, I have had experience. I've had some publishers from the United States uh, that call me up and say, you know, uh, you know, we can help you publish these books and all, you know. Uh, but my experience with that is that you know, a lot of them do not have your best interest at heart. So um, I did a little bit of research. I read uh, a lot about uh, independent publishers. Um, you know, so I discovered that, you know, unless you already um, established and known like yourself, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to, uh, to navigate the publishing world. So I just like, like you said, I'm just going to start. You know, I don't know where this is going to take me. I'm just going to start. So that's what kind of pushed me to say, you know, let, let me just go out there and see what I can do. Um, there are some independent publishers that would take your work and help you 100% royalty, help you put it out there. And um, so one thing I've noticed, the, the challenges, I don't know if you're still going to ask that, now, but let me just join my thoughts together here. Uh, sure. Is, is, go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. All the time in the world. We're not all the time. I did put a half an hour, but I mean, I've had 40 minutes and more interviews than that. So just Scroll on the moon. Just tell me what you feel. Oh, he just dropped off. Okay. Sorry, I lost you for a minute there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have no idea why that happened. I guess it's a Nigerian network issue from what the other lady told me. You guys have network issues out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're rolling and getting into it. Um, but okay. I said it, we, we can take our time. It's not, it's not like this has to be a hand. Oh, right, all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, however how fast it ends, how slow it ends, it doesn't really matter to me. We're trying okay. to make a name out there for this. I'm like the publisher and then an interviewer and an interviewee. We're trying to get people out there to notice this show. I'm trying okay. to get them to notice my YouTube channel. So the basic, right. just keep on going with what you were saying. 
All right. So, you know, I've had this experience with, you know, publishing companies and, and some are fair a little bit, some are not. But what I've noticed is it's it's you better off if you have a little bit of knowledge, uh, you know, DIY high all the way, you know, until maybe somebody has your name out there and, and they start, you know, uh, you know, chasing you with a book deal or something. I know that you would have experienced this, you know, over 10 years, 30 books, you know, um, so I'm just I'm just like kind of navigating these high waters, you know, just so like, how can I get this? How can I cannot do that. And some of them will ask me for a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, one of them, for example, was asking me, say, uh, oh, you know, we're going to love to help you publish your book. So you're going to give us a deposit for seventeen hundred dollars. Uh, and then, you know, when it comes to royalties, they say you get about twenty five percent of the royalties. I said, I mean, it's for to me, it doesn't sound fair, you know. Fear let is let fear. me tell you what, you know what, we could go on and on about this. Let me tell you what, I've got yeah. my books and put and try to put in movies, right? I've had people come up with crazy things saying, Oh, you pay eight thousand dollars, but then you do seventy five hundred. Don't be who you are. Do not let them convince you that because I'm telling you right now, oh, by the way, we could put your movie booking the movie skit. Oh, it's going to cost three or four thousand dollars. Wow! You know, wow. I even I even told them they could use some of the video. Oh, it's still yeah. going to be three thousand dollars. There's wow. no guarantee that their target market is going to hit it. You know what I mean? So, There's no guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, no guarantee. So here's the deal. I I also got offered a New York Times thing for four thousand dollars. Wow. Yes, I wanted to be put in there. The thing is. Like my book just one of my books just went into an SDP school district of Philadelphia contest. That's great. The, the books are not curriculum books, so it fell short of what they wanted to see. But mm -hmm. I know if I put it in a college, it's a technical college book, and I know it would make it. It's just one of things or certain bits of other places and other stuff like that. So to tell you, that's my experience of what you're. I'm bouncing your feedback off of me, and then yeah. That, you. That's kind of the spirit that I have too. Like, you know, I'm just going to push forward. You know, um, we have the resources, no matter how limited. Because, uh, for example, one of our experience, like international uh, publishers, you know, is that we don't have as many platforms as, say, someone living in the West does. You understand what I mean? For example, say I do KDP, right? Okay, I'm familiar with it because I got all my books on there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say I do KDP. KDP, as a person living in Nigeria, KDP does not allow me to upload my account number to receive funds when I sell my book. They, so, you know what? Here's the thing. Let's get into a different topic here. Nigeria is ridiculous. And you're trying to do business with other people, but you can't have a PayPal account. How in the world is it that people function over there? <laughs> You can't have a PayPal account. It that doesn't is, make any sense. It, it's look. Let me tell you what. Your banking. I thought the banking here in the U.S. was going downhill. When I told, and your banks are open only eight till four, and you can't twenty four seven. I mean, that's unreal. I mean, yeah. I, it's very sad. It's very sad. So yeah. Me. So that's that's kind of a roadblock. Uh, that's kind of a. Uh, a, a kind of you know obstacle that you face you know trying to and then you uh you have to go with some applications that's for example pay on the air i don't know if you ever heard about it you have to go with like pay on the air like pay on the air i i can share that with you later on it's it's called pay on the air that's just an example of one of those applications that you can use that let you kind of open a proxy united states bank account so you your money you can't just go on. I mean, let me this interview is turning out to be a real extraordinary already. Yes. Let me, let, let me put it like this. Isn't there a way that you can just go online and open up like a Bank of America account? I know a lady friend of mine out there that has a US Wells Fargo account. Wow. She's not even located even in Nigeria, and somehow she opened wow. up a Wells Fargo account. I will say wow. that Wells Fargo is a junky bank. I've had to sue them. Because wow. there's some identity theft issues that weren't even purchased and could have potentially and they can't they can't they can't explain it. <laughs> they can't right. explain it. Exactly. Yes. So the thing yes. is, my advice to you on that 
as if this was supposed to be an interview author type of show. But now, since you're talking about that, I love to give people advice on this stuff. Okay. Try to open up an account with one of the bigger banks because then you can get around that because they're located everywhere. They're located internationally. You've got Bank of America, I think U.S. Bank's another one. You got Wells Fargo. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know any more which ones I could tell you to do. If okay. you're trying to get in with a big bank, yeah, you might, to, you might just want to look up and even online. You could just do online banks. There's online okay. banks that do international, like Chime. Chime does international. Um, to Go Bank. Um, okay. T Mobile Money. I have one of myself because I like to just do oh, wow. it online. I don't like to go to a physical bank. The old people, wow. and, and just with the nightmares and stuff. But anyways, wow. yes. Um, so who have you published with? That uh, you have never dealt with U.S. publishing, right? It's just international, right? Yes, it's just internationally. Um, one of them is this just a local company, but they have like they have the idea. They have they know how to go around these things, just like you said. They know how to go around these things and give you a wider reach. You understand what I mean? So they're a local company. So besides that, it's just uh, self and then those people. You understand? I've not really done anything that's, you know, that would say, okay, this is unestablished. I mean, th some of those that called me, you know, one of them was, I think, uh, Christian Faith Publishers, uh, Sandoval. You know, I I had a great lengthy conversation with them, but I just realized that, you know, that wasn't the best uh, action for me to go with them at the time. You understand? So I look forward to 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 work with, you know, uh, great companies that give you better opportunities. But, you know, so far, like I said, there they are roadblocks that, you know, just being an international publisher that that, that you face. You know, so that's been a kind of problem. But I have my scores. I have, uh, you know, like, for example, I, I get my inspiration, you know, maybe while I'm working out, while I'm cooking, while I'm, you know, I just pen them down. I know this is a story that has to be told, you know. So I I have them listed like that. Uh, and I set goals, like, say, in next six months, I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to write this book in the next three months, in the next six months, so that, uh, you know, over a long, short period of time, I know that I would have achieved this and that. So that's what I try to do. Um, I learned something that just do it anyways. Just do it anyways. Figure out the details later. That's what I try to do. You know, yeah, so. That's, I mean, here's the thing, because you don't know. That this is like why I look at it. I'm 44 years of age. Your time's ticking any time. You can just, God brought you into this world. He can take you easily out. Yes. Um, not to be scary about it, but it's just like the end times are coming soon. No, no, I, I realize that. And and just to share it really quickly, uh, yeah. uh and 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 uh experience that I had about four months ago, I had a a terrible, terrible car accident. Oh, you what? know, yes, and I don't know how I made it out of that because it was a wreck. You understand what I mean? So that gave me a kind of awakening to what you just said that. On one moment, you could be here, and in the next, you're gone, you know? So I, I realized that through what happened to me. So I kind of just to buttress your point that you have to, the time is ticking, you know, whatever you want to do, do it quickly, you know? So um, time waits for nobody. So I'm just trying to, uh, you know, do the best I can. And hopefully I will get the kind of exposure, the kind of platform that, that you know, uh, I hope to get by the time I, I get to a point so I just do it anyway. Just keep moving. That's awesome. I like the positivity, the never giving up attitude, <clears throat> you know, because you're in a very, compared to the United States, we're the strongest one with a lot more options than what Nigeria is. Nigeria is mm -hmm. a big country in Africa, but they don't have, I'm, I, I've looked at their market, the marketing, like certain jobs they have, but you can't make a living doing what they're doing those jobs. With, I mean, with mm. the money that's going out there. And then I mm. can't believe I mean, how many people are living out there, but they still do it. They still live there. Like yeah. in the United States here, we have uh, inflation right now with food and cars and stuff like that. Our gas wow. market for cars. Wow. But, you know, everybody has a different living situation with what they're in. I see. Um, you know, so it is what it is. Yeah, this is this 
should be the land of the free, but then we got people escaping to this country all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like that. So, mm. all right, let me go on to the next question here. Let's see, make sure okay. we're not overlapping. I'm just going to keep it like it was normal interview, but anyway, it's, it, it's a normal interview anyway. Um, okay. So when you are on the hunt for next big thing, how do you decide which manuscripts to go for? And what's your role in shaping these stories? Can you repeat that, please? Sure. So when you drop again. Uh, we'll get back to one. Come on. Stupid thing. Recording in progress. Go ahead. We will keep we on will going. Keep... If it drops a million times, we're going to keep on going. <laughs> that's that's the spirit. Yeah, that's the spirit. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so the question. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't hear that. Sure. So, when you are on the hunt for the next big thing, how do you decide which manuscripts to go for? And what's your role in shaping these stories? Okay, so um, when I'm when I'm going for the next big thing, what I do is I look at the story as a whole. I look at the story as a whole. I look at the impact, what the society is going through at a time. You know, is this something that somebody needs right now? You know, or do I want to set it ahead so that it's, it's, it's a kind of a prophetic you know, message like in the future, because we've seen books like that, we've seen stories like that, where somebody writes it, and then in 20 years later, like, oh, somebody wrote about this 10 years ago. Oh, you know, there are stories like that. So those are the things that I look at. Um, and then I look at my personal goals. Does it align with my personal goals that I want to achieve? Uh, my short-term goals, my long-term goals. So all of those things put together is what I look at. I look at the society, the impact that the story is going to have. Uh, does someone need that story right now? And then I look at my goals, and, and that's how I, I shape, you know, I shape that story to fit in to see what's best to do in that moment in time. Awesome, you nailed it. You totally nailed it. I mean, it's one of those things where you have dreams and hopes. Like for me, I'll just tell you, in 2010, I made all these books in a bookstore called Lula. And I have wow. the original bookstore 14 years ago, which was me, wow. all these projects. And then when I moved to Philly in 2018, people started giving me the ideas. Well, why don't you get these books out there? I started like using it for a hobby. But then I started doing it, and I started getting noticed. Wow. So, I mean... Uh, not no, we don't make millions of dollars with this industry. No, no, no. no. You, know, you have to have an offer from a contract. And stuff. It's only if you love to do it and if you yeah. have the patience to do the writing and the setup and all this other stuff. That's how it goes. Yeah. Now, to be honest with you, the 30 books, 27, maybe like 25 of them were hobby things. But wow. the five of them were marketing. Because they're all the same, similar titles and ideas. So when you're kind of doing the book, you want to make sure it's marketable and not looking like a mess. So, wow. yeah, you know what I mean? Clean, clear cover like you have right there. And, you know, one of those other things. So me, I first of all, just did it as a hobby. Now I'm doing it as a competition thing. I see other people come out with different types of books. Wow. And it's, and it's really amazing how they do it. Hmm. Okay, let's go on to question number four. And okay. I'll try to, I'm going to try to talk louder. All right. The publishing game is always changing. How do you keep up with what's hot and stay connected with the folks who love reading? We just talked about it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you just basically say, I mean, I'm, I like to get involved in this too. You have to keep updated with the information that you're dealing with. So yes, what's your, yes. What's your reaction to that? How would you deal with it? 
So I, I just do a lot of research, right? I, I try to do a lot of research to know what's going on in the industry right now. You understand what I mean? Like I, I try to look deeper than, than because what's going on last year is different from what's happening this year. And then with technology, you know, things are changing very fast. Ch things are changing very fast. So I, I try to like, how can I catch up? I don't want to be left behind like Burns and Nobles. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I, I guess you, we have a sense of humor type of person there too. <laughs> so, um, you know, we need that too, because, you know, I don't want to write a dry story that somebody, somebody needs to smile when they read a book and get serious at times. So, you know, I, I kind of use that attitude to like, I don't want to be left behind. I want to, I want to, this is, this is part of why I'm talking to you right now. You know, when they told me that, oh, uh, would you like to talk to Mr. Kibosinski? I said, shut the front door. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it, you know, in a heartbeat because it's part of we're talking. And you never know what can come up. You never know what I can learn from you. You never know what, you know, what's going on out there that you know that I don't know. You understand? So that's how I kind of, I talk to other writers. I go to uh, uh, seminars, you know, local seminars, book reading seminars. You know, because we have uh, gatherings where they have just book readings. You know, say you have your book, you can register your book, and then they'll give you a date where you just come and read uh, a portion or the summary of that book. And people come and then they listen to it. And if they like it, you know, you can make a sale from there. You can kind of like just, you know, let more people know about your work uh, out there. So I do those things to stay, in, you know, to stay fresh and, and stay to try to catch up with tired of things. So I have a question for you. I, okay. I have a little competition with you. So how much are your books? How much are they, when you're putting them out there, how much are, how much are the books? Because it usually just depends. Like Kindle books and e-books are the cheap, supposed to be the cheapest. Yes. And then it's the paperback and then the hardback. Have you done all different types of product quality or have you just done certain ones? Uh, I, I do. I just do. I just basically do e-books and paperbacks. That's all I've done. That's I stick okay. to those two. Yes. So I understand that, you know, uh, e-books, I price them very, you know, cheaply. Not I don't want to put too much on them so that the price at, at the same time does not discourage the, the, the person that's going to purchase it, that's going to buy it. You understand? So I try to look at the market and see what generally, that's number one, generally what are ebooks going for? I know the number of pages, the value that you put on the books, the value of the information that I think is in the book. Those are the contributing factors, you know, that I use in determining prices. So say for example, I can say I go to uh, um, KDP, I, put, I try to put like not more than $12. Between eight, I stay between eight and twelve fifty. There about between eight dollars and twelve fifty. And for ebooks, and I try to do maybe three dollars, four dollars. And down here because there's a huge, huge difference between the dollar and the Nigerian local currency. I noticed that one of the ladies was just telling me who I who works for me, and noticed that, and I'm like, wait a second, then we got to do something about that. Because if yeah. you're not getting paid what you're doing, and I, so now I'm doing what I'm deciding to do is she gave me her account number. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in as cash for her so she has everything in cash. That's yes. the first time I've ever had to do that because Nigeria, oh my God, we can't do this and can't do that. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So I look at all of those factors and I say, okay, I'm going to set it within this range. You understand? And maybe one day when I, you know, when I get my uh, New York Times bestseller, <laughs> you understand? Then I can tell, I can tell everybody, if you don't have $25, you're not buying my book, you know? So, but I, I kind of take it from the, from the bottom and just try to, you know, stay somewhere in the middle like that. So let me hear, let me ask you something. You might even beat me at this because here's the thing. Just because I brag about my books doesn't mean I've sold a lot of Mm -hmm. So the thing is, here's the deal. How many books have you sold to for with both those copies? Uh, the first one I did, uh, I sold more paperbacks than than the ebooks because I did 
Uh, I, I went from door to door, you know, because it's a Christian book, I was able to go to churches and, oh, and look you know. That. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> a big, marketable book right there then. That's yeah, and I, I did, I did, um, you know, what um, artists used to do in the past, they put it in the trunk of their cars, <laughs> they put it in the trunk of their cars, and I go to these big churches, these mega churches, and right around the time when they finished their service, you know, so I just kind of like approach people and, and see best. So uh, I say I've done, you know, over a thousand, two thousand there about in soft copies. Uh, in in ebooks, not so much. I'm gonna, you're gonna make me strong on this one. I hate when people defeat me. But yeah. you've just defeated me by a large margin because for the simple fact, the book that I have has a thousand different ways of doing things. This is wow. what it shows like. The thing is, like one friend tried to tell me to go on YouTube, speak, 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 speak. Well, I didn't do it until like a week or two ago. And then come up with this wow. show. So I like to learn off other people too. So what you did was was totally old style, cold style things. Where you just go cold selling door to door, speaking to people, and even in a harder country. Because mm -hmm. they don't have, I mean, my interpretation is, well, if you go to the right businesses, they have the money. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is not very many people have the money to buy $20 for a book. Or mm -hmm. even or even 10 by the Wow. But if you become part of the community, then that's exactly what you need to do. I congratulate you. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can say one thing that I mean, if I wanted a competition here of an outline, I've been on TV three times. I've had <laughs> eight hundred thousand viewers on my shows. My wow. videos have had twenty to thirty thousand views and twenty nine hundred to sixty one hundred likes. So, mm -hmm. but here's the thing. When you're talking about a technical book, one minute. So it's kind of old and beat up because I don't, for right now, this is actually the original first copy. Wow. So the thing is, is that those type of books are very, very hard to sell because there's just so many of them. And it's, yes. you know, I've gotten it published with other publishers. I've put more money into anything than I've ever done. And yeah. no, I've not made a profit off of it yet. But guess what? I like to interview other authors to say, hey, this is what it is. I have a friend named Dr. Dan that's on a podcast show. Now, I'm just going to let you know, I mean, it's an open thing, um, but he's he's a very, very busy man. He makes money off of these type of projects. Oh, he wow. does authors, he does international leaders, and I just figured I'd try to see what I could do with that and see... Eventually, I want to turn the show into a profit show. I want to. But, like, for instance, I'm trying out interviews and seeing how it goes from there. And if it wants to be a volunteer thing for me, fine. If I want to charge a fee, I'll try. But, you know, it's one of those things that we work at. That's what I'm saying. Like, you did this better, so I'm going to execute that to do better on that. That's why yeah. I like to have these interviews. That's why I like to be, you're presenting yourself. You're trying to see if you can get on a radio show or TV show. Definitely. I can say that there was one connection on there. There's a guy named Dr. Dan. He does mm -hmm. different types of interviews and shows, but there is a face for it. Wow. It would probably be around 150 or 200. And then there, if you ever, I don't know what your expansion is, but there is a show in New York, too, that does it for $250, but you get to tell for like a good 20 or 30 minutes about the, and they look at the book and they analyze right. and they see here. There it is, right in the crowd. But yeah. um, there's also other TV shows and other broadcast shows if you know what you're doing. And it sounds like you're very well spoken. I'm already impressed. I mean, I don't even part. I feel like I've known you for years and you've spoken very well. You're very um, uplifting about, you know, God and all this other stuff, which is totally, you know, I didn't even expect that. <laughs> but that's awesome. That's awesome. Because like, this is one of those things where I've been so busy. And haven't really didn't really look at the books, yeah. Uh, but then she showed me to them ten minutes. I'm like, wow, these are holy books, holy mm. books. and that's great. That's awesome. So I'm glad that you know this is yeah, definitely been a learning experience for me. Because I'm yeah. going to tell you what, you do not want to go through a nightmare paying up front money on a contract and argue because yeah. you know, once they have their money, they're not they're not going to 
you know, basically. They're, go, um, they're not going to push hard for you like you would for yourself. Right, exactly. Mm. So it, it's a kind of, a, you know, no experience learning. It's a learning process. It's a journey. Uh, it's a journey for me. So I'm just taking it one step at a time. Uh, it, it's not a sprint, like they like to say. It's not a sprint. It's 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 a kind of a marathon. So um, I do things that that won't see me. I don't want to get gassed out in the middle, you know, uh, because when we look at the market, it's, it's pretty easy to be discouraged. You know what I mean? It's easy. There are elements in the in the market that would discourage you. Like maybe you're not like you said. We don't we don't make we don't make millions, not not even thousands. You know, from some of these works, you understand. But it's more of a call. Like it it's it's what I do with my life. You know, <laughs> and and I tell people when I, I went to college, I I did not study literature or. English language or anything like that. I did computer science and engineering in college, right? But this is my calling. This is this is this is when I do it. I feel like this is me. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know. So while we may have our side gigs, something that that gives you a uh, uh, a little bit of leverage on the financial aspect of your life, you know, I I spend a lot of time doing it, and this is long term what I want to do. So um, I just, it's, it's been a wonderful experience and I'm so excited to be here. Um, I was like, it's, it's six, it's, it's six thirty a.m. I, mean, I hope you, it's not too early for you. So I, I, but I'm glad to be here. You want me to be honest with you? I went yeah. off two, three hours sleep back to back days because of just wow. uh, the stuff that I've been doing. I've had a wow. lot of crazy maniac. I'm trying to make wow. everything happen. I'm trying to make my YouTube channel happen. I'm trying to make my LinkedIn happen. I'm trying to make the Twitter, the Facebook, and everything. And I'm starting to get the likes and everything like that. So yeah. that's why I'm using the video tools and everything like I did. I used to be a CUTV cameraman, but they used to pull out the cable, the old type of style. Wow. Like camera truck. And they used to do sports. Oh, by the way, you pan it to the one angle, get it to two angle, three, four. You know, it's kind of like a clock thing. So, um, yeah, for sure. So let's see here. Oh, here's a here's another key question. Do okay. you have any plans of working with any authors, like any team, like co-authors or anything? Is it just all you? Definitely, definitely. If I if I can find a um, if I can, I always think that if I can find someone a like-minded person, a like-minded author that. We're talking about a topic. Say we're talking right now and a topic comes up. I'm like, oh, that's a great topic. I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about that. I've made some notes on that. I've made some notes on that. That means we are already working together on that. You understand what I mean? Like, I, I always look for what I said. If I can find someone, you know, especially if someone that's that doesn't mind, you know, have the same kind of like-minded person that doesn't mind you know, reaching out and say, okay, how can we do this together? I've seen that with great authors, you know, even to, I read a lot of uh, John Grisham, you know, I know sometimes it's, it's hard to do uh, books with other people, you know. Yeah, so, tell, me about, tell me a little bit about that. Who is that? Because I've never heard of him. You've never heard of John Grisham. So uh, John Grisham is a, he write mostly uh, novels. Um, he used to be a lawyer. And then he, I think he dove a little bit into um, um, what's it called politics. So he writes about legal stuff, cases. Uh, he did the movie, the 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 Pelican Brief. He wrote that book, the one wow. that made a movie. Yes, he wrote that book, the one that made a Pelican Brief of her with Denzel Washington. Well, oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Okay, now, yeah, it's kind of pops yeah. up because. Some of this wrote, I'm familiar with, like, for instance, let, that, let me ask you something. Are you familiar with Robert Frost? Are you familiar with Charles Dickens? Are you familiar with, um, like, the old-fashioned authors from the 19, 1800s, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, just... The type of stuff, like the old-style type of writing, you know? Yes, yes. So I, I kind of try to uh, mix the contemporary, contemporary with the old styles, and see, because there are knowledge from the past that can also shape the future. You know what I mean? So I try to do that. I try to balance things out by looking in the past, especially when it comes to 
um, Christian books, for example, I look in the past because I believe we have more originality, you know, in the way people view things. The new world view is shifting people's belief on the way they look at things. You understand? So if I want to get something more original, that's why we call them classics. If I want to look into something more original, I look in the back, you know, and I kind of see what material I can get from that and see how I can use it, you know, to shape the future. So uh, to answer your question, yes, I always look forward to work with somebody. And they say, if you want to go, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with somebody. So I, I always, you know, I look forward to working with somebody that has a like-minded person. Okay, yeah. So this is another thing I'm going to probably try to do is try to leave open an hour for the show. Because yeah. half an hour would just be, like, for instance, if you go ahead and do, do yourself a favor. Look at my YouTube videos with the interviews I did with Dr. Dan. Yeah. It's a little bit more of an illuminated section where there's a space background and a green background with two chairs sitting. So it's like, a, like a traditional interview, one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, 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 yep. And, you know, not bad. I, th I think I paid 400 for the one time and 600 for the other time. It's for use of a studio. Now he does his own podcast. So he was done dealing with the studio. The studio during yeah. the pandemic was just horrendous. Really yeah. just horrendous. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, let's see. Let's get to a, the next question here. With everything going digital, how has publishing changed for you and any cool tech stuff you're using to reach out more readers. So basically with the technology we have today, is there anything new that you're using that you weren't familiar with that you're using now? Okay, so because technology, you know, everybody's talking about AI. Everybody's talking about AI. So I, I've researched that and see how I can Kind of like I said, you know, was making von last. I don't want to be left behind, <laughs> you oh, know. Yeah. yeah. So I want to be able to leverage technology. Uh, so like for example, there are softwares when you speak, it just writes for you. You understand? You know, I I don't buy the idea of you know just letting AI do it because it's not the same. It, it can never be the same because when I'm writing, I'm a thoughtful writer. I mean, I'm very thoughtful. I think about left, right, why, who, when, and where. You know, uh, AI cannot. It, it's called the five W. Yes, AI cannot do that yet. He just write mechanically. I say, if you want to make a story about the Transformers and and uh, the Avengers, yes, AI can do that because it's just there's there are no much of emotions in it. You understand? So I, I I'm a thoughtful, but I want to see how that technology can help me. So reduce my workload. That's how I leverage technology. You know, can I find a software that when I just speak the words, it'll type for me? Can I use the technology when I'm reading back my text? The computer reads it for me, so I don't have to read it. You know, it makes it it makes my work a little easier. You know, so I do those things. And if I want to make a draft, that's not the writing per se. I just want to make a bullet point, a draft. I can have chat GPT do that for me. You understand? Just yeah. to make my workload a little bit easier. So those those are the ways I leverage, and I look at the way the world is going right now. That um, as humans, our attention span is shortening. You know, yeah. you know. As I said at the beginning, I said I wrote over four hundred. I said to myself, I said I'm never gonna do that again because it's hard these days to get them to sit down and read four hundred pages of book. So I I look at that as well. I try to use technology to see how we can summarize. Uh, some yeah, of my work. Let me give you a suggestion. You have one big advantage. I don't. You have a 400 page book. Now, I'm going to just let you know I had a one dramatic experience with one of my friends, or Dr. Dan, of course, that made publishing hard as heck. We try to edit him stuff. 520 pages of 100 days of happiness journey. Look it up. I wow. edited that book, and I'm telling you what, it took days to do it. Yes, and yes. Now this guy has 10 or more books. He's got several different doctor disciplines. I'm actually working on a doctoral degree right now myself. I'm three years away from getting it done. It's going to be a long journey. So 
um, you know, the thing is that we're all on our long journeys. We're yes. Trying yes. to accomplish one thing at a time, every day at a time. And all this yes. Stuff. Yep. For sure. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Now, um, let's see. To the next question. Um, try, let's try to make these answers a little bit shorter because we're cutting on okay. time. Like another 10 minutes. Try to, try to make no more than an hour. If it goes over now, it's not going to be I'm just trying to be a short tool. I appreciate you coming on, too. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, diversity is key these days. Diversity. How do you make sure your lineup of book represents different voices and perspectives? So I always put that in mind when I'm writing, when I'm doing a story. I want to do a story. I want to do a book that transcends time, space, and cultures that people can relate with, you know? So take my books, for example, you know, the one, if you're, if you're a believer, it doesn't matter where you live. You can relate to it. You can read it without saying, oh, where did this happen? Woo, what? You don't need to have it. It's basically just address you as a human being. You understand what I mean? He addresses you as a human being. And, and Cold Wish is just a story about what's going on. You know, I know some people just made a, a movie uh, about, you know, child abuse and all those things that's going on in the world. You know, this is a story that appeals to human emotion and see what's going on and how we can address these issues and how people deal with these issues. So it doesn't have anything to do with whether I'm in Nigeria or you are in the United States or someone in Canada or someone in the Great Britain, you know, it cuts across cultures. And, you know, I try not to take into too much into consideration of my local environment because I want my works to go beyond that. So that's that's how I deal with diversity. And I try to get contents and, and uh, ideas from other people across the globe, not just locally. That's a good answer. Very good, solid answer. Okay, now we got three more questions to go. So let's try to see if we can get, you know, like a minute or two of wait, how you feeling. Um, so we can get a solid uh, start off the show. What marketing tricks are you using for the latest releases? Navigating the crazy world of book promotion must have some interesting stories. Yes. So I try to learn from people that are releasing music and releasing movies and stuff. So we create content around a work that's released. Say I can do a, a nice poster and put it on Instagram and do a sponsored ad for that because it will reach more people. You understand? You know how they do that. You do, you reach more people by doing sponsored ad. And if anyone is interested, just click the button and it leads you to the link. So the KDP or whatever platform link you put in there, that's one of the tricks I use. Another one is going out uh, point blank and say, okay, I just came out with this book. This is why you need to read it. This is going on in the world right now. You need to see this. You don't want to miss out on, on this. You know, I, I go how cold talk like that. And sometimes I just have other people, you know, uh, post it for me, have other people speak about it for me. Those are some of the tricks that I use. Very, very cool. Now, some of the tricks I use is doing on Facebook, my different business pages, Twitter, LinkedIn, using all the connections. One thing that I recommend people to do is book signing and book shit. If you have it available out there, go ahead and do it. If you have a small publisher that gives you like three to five hundred dollars to publish a book or a thousand dollars to get like book signings and stuff, that's a, that's worth it. Because then you have people that will go out there and you might be able to reach even bigger and better with contracts. But okay. I mean, yeah, there's a guy named Bethany Kennedy that wanted me to be his like uh, literary agent. Well, I tried it. It's not as simple as it is. Because, <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, I mean, he was asking, I remember one time he asked for $5,000. I was like, you think I'm going to just pull? Wait a second, $5 bill. Hundred dollar bill. I'll put it on the tree. Put it on the tree. Now, can't expect people to give you money like that. No. Yeah, because money is not come easy, and mm -hmm. may it has to be something very, very big to spend money on. Yeah. And worth it yeah. being a guarantee. Yeah. So yeah, you had a very interesting answer there. 
Um, there's YouTube. I'm telling you what, get a YouTube channel. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm working on get the work, just getting the followers. Yesterday I had 20. That might not sound like a big jump, but I got 28 already. I have eight that's extra. Great. That's, one, that's great. In one day. And I did that's it. Great. I did it on my own, basically. Not yeah. I mean, nobody, I didn't hire nobody to do it. You just you just have another one. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and another but hopefully another thousand <laughs> all right let's go yeah yeah okay so let's see here um number nine any hurdles you faced in the publishing world what's a challenge that taught you something important the challenge that taught me something important is that when you are out there trying to uh, market your book everyone does not have your interest at heart Everyone that says, oh, I want to help you does not mean that they really want. Some of them are in it just for themselves. What's in it for me? You know, that's the kind of world we live in right now. That's one big lesson I learned. So it's amazing that, oh, you want to you want people to know about my works and things like that. That's amazing. But are you doing it for me? Because this is about this work that I'm doing. You understand? But I've seen a lot of instances where you know, um, people just go in it for what's in it for me. So I learned that to always, you know, don't trust everybody, you know, be open-minded, but always clarify and verify information. You know, that's what I learned along the line. Awesome, 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 awesome. The thing is, one thing I've learned is that publishers, some publishers just can't be trusted. No. And, I, and I'm one person, I'm easy and friendly, easy going. But if I have a debate or an argument, or if I have to tell you how it is, I'm going to put them right in their place. Yeah. Do um, fire publishers because they thought they were going to do it their own way, and that was it. Yes. It just yes. is what it is. So yes. you got to stay in your ground when it comes to your mind. Right. Um, okay, so the final question is, what's next on your bookshelf? Any exciting plans for your publishing gig? Any specific kind of books or projects that you're itching to dive into? Right now, I'm doing a, a novel. It's a kind of novel. You know, after this one, I did like to put God first and say, now, so let me go. I have different many ideas. So the one I'm doing right now, it's a novel about a boy uh, whose girlfriend was kidnapped by some bad guys. Um, you know, so he has to go. He has a very rich father. Uh, you know, his father would want him to do something, take over his business after he's gone. But this boy is not, this guy is not interested in doing that. You know, so he wants to live his own life. He wants to be his own self. So he does a little bit of conflict with the father there. So um, so when it comes to his, his you know, wife to be being kidnapped, he goes to the father and say, oh, I need some help. The kidnappers are are looking, they, they want so much, so much amount of money. So um, the father said, look, I am i can't help you because you're not accepting my proposal. So he has to uh, go do it on his own. Um, luckily for him, he has friends that, he has friends from China, from the United States, because he goes to school in the United States. So he, he kind of put it off, you know, happy ending, uh, great story. So I'm kind of, that's next on my bookshelf and I'm still doing my research and putting my thoughts together on that. But that's that's what's coming next. Okay, so yeah. I don't know if I have you as a connection on LinkedIn, but add, I'm very fascinated with this interview that how this went today. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely picked the right person to pick because she's doing the picking for the interviews. So oh, wow. did, but yeah, and I just hired her this week and she's doing an awesome job. So, wow. um. Here's what we're going to do. Um, here's what I would suggest you do. Did you ever think about getting into ministry? Because it sounds like you're really in for it. I mean, like an assistant pastor or um, what is it called? I forget what it was like. Um, a mentor, a coach or a mentor. Or, of course. Of yeah. course. I, I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about that, actually, because I also did, a, I did a, you know, I studied divinity. Um, I did a lot of, you know, with Bible schools, even one of them in the United States in Florida. Um, so, you know, so I, it's something that I'm hoping to, of course, I, I minister in my local church here. Oh, okay. 
Yes, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, the, the pastor's given me the, the opportunity tomorrow to, to speak to the people. Um, because I also, you know, I do speaking sometimes when I have to motivational speaking and, you know, talk to people in the church and all those things. So something just popped in the mind. Yeah. This is something I'm trying to get myself into. It's not easy yeah. to get into. You can get paid to guest speak. Yes. They'll pay you internationally, wherever they go, anywhere to speak. Yeah. You might want to look into that. I would look, I would, I would definitely look into that. So I'd uh, like to answer your question. Yes. Yes, I'm open to that. Uh, you know, mentoring, speaking to people and all of that. Because apart from writing these books, you know, it's also good when you when you speak to people verbally, you know, people can connect better because they can hear your voice inflections. They can, you know, see your gestures and understand what you mean. And you can kind of connect to them uh, in a better way than a book will. Wow. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 41 now? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Age definitely makes a difference. I've been told that I was 30. <laughs> you feel old, like younger. <laughs> so, yes. All right. Well, hey, it was definitely interesting interviewing, and I'm looking forward to um, just add me on LinkedIn, and then I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Okay. And, okay. Further interviews, and learn even some feedback off of what I've done. To Definitely. Well, we got to learn <laughs> off each other, no matter where. Not, we're not even down the road. We yeah. Can, we can yeah. learn from each other from different countries, from the Philippines, yeah, and all this other stuff. But it was definitely great to have you. I'm super excited about this because I'm about ready to put this on my YouTube channel. This was great. Um, and if you ever, my contact information is on my LinkedIn. So if you need anything at all. By chance, which it doesn't sound like because you are already prepared and ready to go for that. I usually have yeah. people that don't have little or no knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, totally impressed with what you brought to the table here today. Because I'm telling you what, Nigeria is not an easy country to live in. One. Number yeah. two, if you came here, if you were living in the U.S., it wouldn't be any different. You would, yeah. be, you would be doing the same thing. Everybody thinks it's all hunky dory. Yeah. We have to yeah. pay taxes. What you know. It, Expenses are going up. It's not easy. Everywhere. Easy. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. It's crazy. So, you know, but we 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 are going to um we are going to figure it out eventually, you know. Uh, as long as we stay keep moving, keep running. Like MLK said one time, he said, you know, if you can't walk, if you can't crawl, if you can't run, just walk. If you can't fly, you know, do whatever. But by home means just keep moving. You know, just keep yeah. moving. Yeah, see, that's what you do. You use old people, old time people that used to preach and stuff like that. A shame, it's a shame the way it ended him because yeah. he, he had so much more, like, same with Malcolm X. And same with Malcolm yeah. X. The people were just trying to make a difference, and people just didn't like him. They, you know, they ended up shooting him, killing him over religious beliefs. I mean, because yeah. the, word, the word hates the truth. The yeah. word hates the truth. You know, so but but we we're gonna be fine. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure uh, connecting with you. I will look on my I will look on my LinkedIn and I'll definitely uh, connect with you over there too. Um, so yeah, and then you can also this will be up within the hour. So all right, your interview will be up in the hour. I just gotta do some fine tuning with. Yes, definitely, definitely. As it is. So make it look the part. <laughs> right, right, uh, right. That's that's important too because we want to when people look at it, uh, like I was saying about people's attention span, you have to also put in all those kind of uh, you know, tweaking and tweeting to make it, you know, somebody wanna uh you know tune in. So it's definitely been a pleasure. So when you see my uh my LinkedIn pop up, don't be afraid because I volunteer with uh with a company from out of Canada. It's it's uh it's called VCO. You know, it's in the you know, it's it's a communication hub. Like like-minded people, we just gather, we talk about things. Yeah, and what not, we do yeah, yeah. I'm not nitpicking, trust me. I'm trying to get as many followers to <laughs> yes. as hundred. So um yeah. so, to get, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, we'll get there. You'll get there. The the most important thing is starting and keep going. And it's just like planting a seed. You know, it's gonna grow. It's gonna grow. Just put it in the right 
in the right condition, in the right, you know, put all the things that need, you know, right atmospheric conditions, it's going to grow. It's going to grow, you know, with patience and hard work, we'll get there. We'll get there. So um, it's definitely been a pleasure. All right. No problem. Thank you for your time and appreciate you adjusting to the six hour pan foot kind of. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> hey, That's fine. have a good, have a good inspiring you day. Too, you too. Have a good have a great weekend. Bye.